Routed protocols and logical addressing actually define the network boundaries and they allow for packets to be routed. We know that. But the question of how route tables are actually built and maintained on a router remains to be answered. So that's what we want to answer in this short video. There are two main methods of building route tables on a router. They are statically and dynamically. Static routing simply means that routes are manually entered into the route table by an administrator or someone else that actually has, it by you if you're the administrator, whoever has access to the settings and the configuration settings on that router. Now that can be, again, directly connected to it, or it can be remotely over a network. If you have login and you have access to that router, you can statically enter the routes, manually enter those routes on the route table of that router. That's the first method. With static routing, administrators and Add and delete routes as needed. The benefits of static routing are that you have less overhead on the router's actual CPU. There's no need to compute routes for the table if they're manually entered and maintained. You have less bandwidth usage on your network because no route advertisements need to be sent out from this router to adjacent routers or to other routers on the network. Routers don't need to send that route, route advertisements out to each other so that they can learn each other's routes. It's also very secure when you statically enter routes on a router. If routes can be only added manually by by an administrator or by you, there is less chance that that route table can be poisoned by an outside influence or someone else trying to hack into your network. Now, for obvious reasons, this method does have its disadvantages. The static route method does have its disadvantages. If route tables are statically built and maintained, any change to an existing network causes some issues. In other words, routers will continue to forward traffic to a network that is down because the manually maintained route tables tell them to. If the administrator does not have a thorough understanding of the network or is slow to react to any network changes that are made, say, now when we say network changes, we're talking about like another router is added in, another, another switch is connected, that type of thing. Network changes. So really any physical changes to your network or logical changes. But when those changes are made, an administrator has to manually enter new static routes if that's the route method being used. And network traffic can be disrupted for long periods of time. Therefore, static routing is not really recommended or even feasible for a large network or even a moderately good-sized network. Now, dynamic routing, on the other hand, is an excellent choice for medium to large size networks. When you're using dynamic routing, routers actually learn about network routes and update their tables automatically. And they learn these routes from each other. They learn them from other routers around them. New network routes are added, outages are dropped or rerouted, and changes are updated on the fly based on how a particular routing protocol functions. Now, routing protocols define how route tables are built and they're, they're characterized by methods used to exchange routing information between routers, the metrics used to determine those routes, and the amount of time it takes for the network to actually do what they call converge. The two major categories of routing protocols are distance vector and link state, and we will get into those in another short video, but I just wanted to go over those two methods, the way routers actually set up their routing tables and develop their routes on a network. They're statically entered by an administrator, or by you, or whoever has access to that router configuration, or they are dynamically routed. They, they figure out their routes dynamically based on a routing protocol that's being used.